Hello, everyone. Um, thank you. So let's get started because I have a lot to cover in 10 minutes. It's very hard to squeeze this API stream API in 10 minutes, but I'll do my best to encourage you to uh, go after this talk and experiment a little bit more about this uh, API. So, in fact, uh, the idea behind this talk was because, you know, I've been working with PWA and at the brain of the PWA service workers, and most of the people are like using service worker as a cache mechanism, let's say. Service workers stays between your network requests as well as uh, your um, application, right? So it's like a proxy. So we're using service worker for caching mechanism a lot. That is good, makes our application offline, performance improvement, very good. But it does a lot more. And the fact that service worker runs in another thread, so it gives us a lot of more opportunity to leverage service worker. And one of those, those APIs that you can use in service worker is stream API. So I'm gonna talk about the stream API very quickly, give you some example and samples that I've done in real world application. And then you see how it will improve the application. Very quickly about myself, my name is Majid. I'm a solution architect in Telia Norge. Um, and I am also Google Developer Expert, community leader in Oslo. So come talk to me if you are talking about communities. So let's get into stream APIs. Very quickly, what I have to tell you is that the idea behind the stream API is that to give you an opportunity to uh, use a smaller chunk of data, process it, and output it to another source, right? Which probably is your website in this case, by uh, JavaScript API. So you can leverage this API to do a lot of things. For example, you, when we have like video effect, or when you want to add some kind of image effect, or, or, or perhaps one of the good examples is it will reduce the first uh, contentful paint time. So I'll show you how you can leverage this API with Service Worker and App Shell and, uh, at the end of this talk. So, Let's uh, be on the same page before I move forward and give you some examples. The core concepts behind the stream are a few facts. Uh, one of them is that you know you are um, a chunk that I'm talking about is a single piece of your data. So you are splitting your data to a smaller piece that can be streamed. And you have readable streams and writable streams, where the readable streams are an instance of class of readable streams. You can read from that. And the writable is where you can actually write into with the JavaScript API. You have transfer stream, which is providing the readable and writable in one class, transfer stream. And well, when you have this stream, you can also pipe them into different things. For example, by using pipe to or pipe through, which allows you to um, transform with multiple you know, mutations. Uh, you also have push and pull resources. Well, idea that the, if I want to give you an example of like uh, push sources are like, for example, web sockets, right? So these are the push sources. They just send you data. And the pool uh, sources are those sources that you are explicitly asked for, for example, using uh, fetch uh, in JavaScript. Here is one example. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to make this turtle a colorful title to a gray scale data right in the browser. So that is actually the example here is running right now in the browser. You can uh, later check out this uh, slides and you see the source code over there. So uh, imagine that we're gonna have like a grayscale uh, gray PNG transformer already written in JavaScript, right? So how now this works? When you fetch your turtle, so Here's an uh, important fact. You need to use fetch if you want to use a uh, stream, right? So when you fetch uh, your uh, image or your resource, in this case, this turtle, uh, what you will do is that you will get a respond which has a body, and that body is a readable stream. So in that body, then, you can use pipe through and 
use your transformation uh, uh, or transform stream to use those transformation that you want to do. For example, here, you want to do a grayscale PNG transformer, right? And then you create a new respond. Well, in this case, because this is an image, I'm going to show it right away again to the browser. I'm going to create a blob, a URL, and then I set my image. And then you see that right away, I get this image like as a grayscale um, PNG. Let me give you another example in Service Worker in this case right now. So you, in Service Worker, you're going to listen to your fetch request, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do here, you can create a readable stream here. So instead of getting a one, uh, one big uh, like data back to your uh, client, you can actually create a readable stream and send the data chunk by chunk. So here is uh, what you can do here. So for example, here is where you can use the readable and writable stream from transform a stream class. Then you pipe it to the readable stream. The, the respond of the body can be piped to the writable, and then you respond that to your browser. Then you are creating a stream right now. I'll show you how it will work in the, uh, quickly in the browser. Let me give you a, a better example on top of this. For example, let's say you have a big JSON file, like maybe, I don't know, 10 megabytes of JSON. You want to parse it right now. That's very heavy uh, to parse, right? What we can do here in this case, that is in main thread, but you can do it right in the uh, service worker as well. I fetch my the JSON file, and here is where I'm actually pathing my body, again, the readable stream, to a JSON transformer. It's just similar to what I've done with the grayscale image, but here in this case, I'm using a JSON transformer, right? So I'm creating a stream. I'm going to iterate over that until this parsing is done. So I'm sending these chunks to my browser chunk by chunk. Let's see in action how it works. So I deliberately chose a slow connection to show you how expensive it can be. But look at the network request in this case. And the, the chunk of data that I'm passing to my application. Good. So here is now you created a stream. It's way faster for your client because they, need, they don't need to wait until this is done. Well, you can send chunk by chunk when everything is ready, right? All right. But how you can make this uh, to work for your application um, as loading the HTML part. One idea in uh, the PWA is creating an app shell, right? The idea behind it is to create such a, a shell that part of it is static, like header, footer, and part of it uh, that can be cached as well. And the main part of it, the dynamic data is loading well, when we are requesting. This is the idea. But when you do that, in each page, you're requesting footer and uh, header as well, right? So if you look at the time and length of getting this uh, data, these footer, header, and the dynamic data all comes together, where if we cache them and send like as in a stream, you can actually load header and footer uh, from the cache and then you can load the data or send the data, uh, the dynamic data to the browser when it's uh, coming necessary as a readable stream. In this case right now, because writing this logic <laughs> in a single JavaScript format, it will be a little bit cumbersome. So I'm going to use a library to facilitate that for me. For, uh, the library that I'm going to use is Workbox. 
so where you can write your service worker easily. So Workbox uh, allows me to pre-cache my content. I will have two routes here, um, a shell header and a shell footer. I don't need to block my customer because of some resources in this case. I will cache them when I install the service worker. Once that is in place, then I'm going to use two strategies for the rest of the content. One is the content strategy, where in this case I'm going to use a stale with uh, revalidate. And then the cache strategy comes from the cache. So this is in Service Worker right now. So I'm going to register my HTML path and say hey, when there is an HTML request in my path or navigation, then I will use the stream API, but via the workbox uh, abstraction, right? And the strategy will be, please send me uh, the shell header and the footer from the cache and make uh, my content always coming from network. So in this case, when I'm requesting a page, those two parts are coming from cache right away, and the second part is coming when it's available. All right. What I want you to take away, this is very quick to go very deep into the stream API in 10 minutes. But I give you some idea how you can create a powerful stream of uh, network data to your client application. That will hugely impact uh, the first uh, contentful paint time. And you will also know right now that with Service Worker you can do a lot more than just caching. And the fact that Service Worker runs in another thread it, it helps you to, like, for example, the JSON transformation that is running in another thread without blocking anything in UI thread. So that helps you to improve your uh, UX in your application. All right, that was it from me, very quick. And thank you very much. If you have questions, then after actually these slides uh, or these uh, talks, uh, I can answer your questions. I'll leave the stage for the second speakers because I think I am a little bit over time. <laughs>